going on, everyone from Overtime Heroics? My name is Dan Podolsky, and I'm joined here with UFC lightweight Mike Breeden. He is taking on Natan Levy at UFC Vegas 53 on April 30th. Mike, how have you been doing, and how's the training been going? I'm doing good, man. Um, training's been going good. I finally get a camp. It's been a long time since I had a camp. Um, if you don't, a lot of people don't know, but like my last what year and a half, I've taken fights on week notice, week and a half notice. So this is it's nice to get a full camp for this go around. Yeah, and you you talk about that. How much weight did you have to cut for the short notice against Alexander Hernandez? Uh, man, I'm thinking like 23 pounds, maybe a little more. Um, yeah, it was it was rough. <laughs> It, and like, how much of a difference does that make for you getting a full camp versus you know having to cut so much weight on a short short nose fight? First, I mean, you're just sharper, um, faster, um, lighter on your feet. Um, you have a game plan going into it. You know, you're preparing for somebody, and um, when you're dieting and doing the weight cut right, you can take more damage. You know what I'm saying? Like cutting that much weight in eight days is not good on the brain, you know, but I went out there and did what I could do. You know what I'm saying? Went out on my shield. What, and what, what was it like getting that call? Because Alexander Hernandez is a guy who's been in the top 15 has knocked out, you know, Benil Darius is a very well-known lightweight. He's not some, yeah. you know, journeyman. He's yeah, a- no, he's a beast, man. <laughs> Hernandez is a beast. Um, really good fighter. Um, you said how to make me feel to get in the call. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I I was super excited. It was actually um, my son's birthday that night. I was in the middle of, you know, having a few drinks, um, eating cake, and all that stuff. And they're like, "Whatever you're doing, stop. <laughs> um, we got to make weight in eight or nine days." And so with this fight, you're taking on a Todd Levy. Have you gone to watch any of his previous fights? And is that a big part of how you train and watching film? Yeah, um, I mean, I've looked him up. I didn't, like, watch too much of it. I just watched a few of his fights just to see what he brings to the table. You know, great kicker, you know, karate style. Um, yeah, so, I mean, I don't tend to get too caught up in, like, watching film. I just look for a few things, see what he's bringing to the table. Um, I train with a bunch of killers in the gym, all different types of styles. So I'm pretty, you know, well-rounded at seeing different styles in the gym every day. So I'm prepared for everything. What do you think gives you the advantage over on leading this fight? Uh, just my experience. I got, you know, more, more cage time than him, more experience. And so, unlike, you know, I think you, your style very much is, you have eight wins all by knockout. And the time Levy's more of a grappler. He's a big submission threat. When looking at this, have you been training a lot on your ground game to kind of counter his style? Oh, man. That's all we do at our gym, man. You know, wrestle, 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 wrestle. That's the biggest part of the fight. So um, I really, I, t- I don't really wrestle, but like if I need to, I can. I can do that all day. Um, but I like to keep it exciting for the fans, throw leather. But, um, but I, I'm, I'm feeling that um, he'll be shooting for a couple of takedowns. Um, so I'm ready for everything. I'm just going to keep the heat on him. Yeah, and you're, you have an 80% finish rate all by KO. Is that, you know, sort of your mentality going into the fight? Is it just to try to get the finish, try to knock your opponent out? I'm always looking for the finish, man. I'm going to walk you down and um, keep steady pressure on you. And uh, if you can't take the heat, you're going to break. So, Is that uh, – do, do you have a prediction for this fight? Man, I'm thinking, I'm thinking like round two knockout. Okay. Fair enough. And then, so you fought on Contender Series a couple of years ago, didn't win that fight. How, like, did that change your mindset? Like, what, what was the initial mindset? Was it demoralizing at all, or did that motivate you to just kind of keep grinding through it and eventually get to the UFC? Well, it definitely motivated me. Um, but, man, a lot of people don't know what I went through just to even make it to that fight. Um, I haven't really even talked about it. Um, I signed uh, the contract like seven weeks out for that fight. And then literally the next night, I got rushed to the hospital with internal bleeding. I had a bunch of adhesion in my belly wrapped up in my bowels and my stomach intestines. And I was bleeding from my belly button. And like I was in so much pain. I had surgery that night. And um, I was on bed rest for like, I think four weeks. 
So I had three weeks to get ready for that fight. But, like, I couldn't run. I couldn't spar. Uh, like, all that I could do was, like, shadow box and diet. Like, eat clean for that fight. So, like, I mean, I did what I could. We almost talked about pulling out of that fight. But um, we were like, no, nah, we got to go out there and give it a shot, you know. And then when we land in Vegas, all my cornermen's popped for COVID. So I'm cornerless on top of that. Mm-hmm. So the circumstances were super crazy. Hats off to him, you know what I'm saying? Um, it just wasn't my night. I did what I could do. I went out on my shield, and uh, yeah. And, and so you talk about your corner. Your coach is James Krause. How much, yeah. how much of a difference does it make, you know, having him? He's obviously a well-known coach and a former fighter. Oh, yeah. I mean, it makes a huge difference. Um, he knows what exactly to say to me to get me going. Um, that His vision from the side, uh, side of the cage is crazy. Like. He's like playing a video game and whatever he calls out, I'm just doing it. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So definitely a huge part in my game. And then, so in your last fight against Hernandez, short notice, you were about a seven to one underdog in this fight. They still have you as around a plus 180 underdog. Is that something that you pay attention to at all? And does it at all motivate you being the underdog? I I don't pay no mind to that. I mean, they just don't know about me, but, uh, um, I mean, once people start to, to realize what I'm about, I'll be a fan favorite and they'll put some respect on my name, but I don't pay it no mind. Fair enough. I've had some guys tell me like that they're – I've had one guy tell me that he's betting his contract on himself. Some guys tell me that, you know, if they're the underdog, then it just motivates them more. So I wasn't sure if that changed your mindset at all, but fair enough. And then I think just, you know, my final question, if, if all goes well and you beat Natan Levy, how active do you want to be in 2022? And, you know, what – what do you see as your future in the UFC going forward? Man, um, I see myself having a long UFC career. Um, super exciting style. Um, when I win this fight, uh, I, I would like to get right back to it. Um, you know, within the next month or so, if I'm, you know, not banged up or anything like that, and then fight one more time at the end of the year. So at least two more fights this year, you know. And, uh, man, in my career, um, I got a fan-friendly style. I bring action. Uh, I'm never in a boring fight. So I, I feel like um, I just stay on the grind, man. I'm going to be in there for a while. Fair sure enough. Mike Breeden, thank you so much for taking the time. Guys, you can watch Mike fight against Natan Levy uh, next Saturday at UFC Vegas 53. Mike, thank you so much. All right, man. You have a good one. You too. All right.